Hello and good morning, or well, it is a good morning here, as you can see the sun streaming in. Today is March 8th, so it is International Women's Day, and they've just announced the long list for the Women's Prize for Fiction, and I was really excited, and so I'm just going to do a quick reaction. I think they've just released like a quick video with all the titles, and it's about only four minutes, so I'll watch it, and then I will give some thoughts, and yeah, we'll see who who's on this list. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I've never heard of this one. Also haven't heard of this one. This is exciting. Oh, this one's Sky Day. Nice. I am... Um, that one's been on my TBR since um, the summer. Flamingo. Hmm. Oh, The Great Circle, yeah. I feel like that one's mentioned a lot. Those of people read it last year and really enjoyed it. The Paper Power. Hmm. Oh, nice. I really want to read this one. Creatures of Passage. Hmm. So many titles I haven't heard from before and that weren't on people's um, like uh, prediction list either. So endless. Oh yeah, that's on my um, on my TBR obviously with Elif Shafai. I think this was also shortlisted, longlisted for the Costa Book Awards. So yeah. Oh, yeah, that's been on my TBR as well. Wait. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. The final revival of Oprah and Mav. Hmm. Not heard of this one. And that's it. Oh my goodness. Hmm, that is, that, okay, that was so interesting. Um, that was the 16 books. I think I've only heard about half of them and that half was like on my TBR and the other half like I had not heard from before. Oh, that's so exciting. Okay, I'm gonna go and do some research and I'm gonna go and look into what I can find and get my hands on maybe from the library and stuff um, and get back to you about that. Um, but yeah, I look forward to reading most of these. There's a couple that seem a bit kind of um, a harder read, but still, I think that sounds amazing. Yeah, okay. All right, exciting. Congrats to all 16 women for being long-listed um, with these books. And yeah, we'll see about maybe reading them and what I thought before the shortlist is announced at the end of April. Hello. All right, I'm back. We're like the next day. And I've gone on my library website, I've done some research, and I have thoughts. I also spent all of like yesterday evening looking at people's reaction on the long list. And it seems like a lot of people are surprised. So I'm glad that I wasn't the only one who didn't know like a lot of the books mentioned on the list. And I feel like, <laughs> like last year was quite an exciting list. And I feel like this year is maybe like as of now less interesting but I think it'll still be like a good one to learn about new authors, especially because I think there's five debut novels on this list, which is great. Loads of indie publishers. So I just think that generally it's going to be an interesting <laughs> list. Um, I've decided that I'm going to try to read as many as I can. So I found 11 books out of the 16. So I'll try to read all 11 before the shortlist is announced on the 28th of April. I think the premise, if you didn't know for I didn't really do an intro early in this video, but if you didn't know, um, obviously the woman's price of fiction has to be a fiction book written by a woman. And it has to have been published in the UK between, I think it's last April, so April 2021 and March 2022. It can be from anywhere, the author. And I think we've really seen that. Um, I don't think it's a particularly diverse list, 
but it is from a, there are a variety of countries so there's um i think the majority are british and american which you know yes makes sense because that's where the majority of writers who speak english are from i guess um i think there's a canadian there's some caribbean writers and i, I want to say there's like two new zealand authors which feels random but that's cool um <laughs> so yes um i found 11 of the books there's five that i did not find some of them i'm quite upset about because i really wanted to read them and some of them i'm like whatever it's fine okay let's start with the sentence by louise erdrich i feel like i'd heard her name before and i thought i saw i think that she won the pulitzer and um, i think like she's one of the bigger names on this list but because i don't know if she's american but i feel like stuff is based in the us um i like when i've been looking for her books literally it's not coming up with any results like my library is literally like no results for this name so clearly not any of her books are held here i can't find them on any of the subscription apps or my library apps or anything but i was really upset because it sounded so good so the sentence is it seems to be basically about this ghost haunting a bookstore in i think i want to say it's minneapolis but i'm not sure and it, yeah it just sounds so good and um, I was really like pulled to the subject but yeah I'm, I'm really sad that I can't find a copy I'll keep an eye out just in case it kind of you know comes up maybe the library requires it because it's been long listed for the moment's prize but yeah we'll see then the second one that I was really excited about was Salt Lake by Lulu Allison um I don't know when I saw the book cover I was like Mm, it looks a little bit like elegiac like it looks really interesting but also really artsy and apparently yeah the author is an artist and it seems to be like i think i want to say almost like a dystopian but like a realistic dystopian like we're heading toward that because our world is fucked anyway um but yeah i was really excited by just the way that the judges announced it in that little video and it seems to be like about nature and stuff like that so yeah i was really excited but again that's an author that doesn't come up with any results on any platform that i've used so i have not been able to find a copy and i'm like not keen enough to like buy a copy yet <laughs> because also i've not heard of anyone who's read this book so maybe let's see if booktubers read it for the long list and you know get some feedback from that maybe if it's on the short list and maybe i would try to find that again but anyway then the other three that i didn't find i wasn't actually that keen about the first one is the vi the final revival of opal and nev by donny walton a lot of the american <laughs> booktubers that i've seen were very excited about this book and i believe that this was on bark obama's like favorite books of 2021 something like that anyway um it's a book i think a novel that's based in what did i write 70s punk rock music scene in new york city <laughs> um yeah none of that is really appealing to me i feel like the political response of the main musician in the book like it's in the synopsis i feel like that act of like resistance almost is the only bit that was interesting me in this whole um summary but yeah i don't know i think i probably would have given it a chance if i found a copy especially because so many people are so excited about this book um but yeah i, can't, I didn't find it and yeah we'll let it go for now <laughs> similarly it's flamingo by rachel elliott it's another one that i was like i'm not really interested by the sound of it I would have given it a try if I found it. I actually found the cover so striking and immediately I was like, oh, I want to, I want to read that. But then I kind of heard what it was about and I was like, maybe not. Mm. So what did I say that it was about? Uh, I just said the summary does not interest me so much. That was the only comment I wrote. So clearly <laughs> I spent a lot of time thinking about this. Anyway, moving on. The next book is Creatures of Passage by Morowa Yejide and I think this is another one that has to do with ghosts I think there's like three or four books in this list that have ghosts it's a bizarre kind of theme throughout but anyway so it seems to be like the main character is a taxi driver 
in a haunted car very interesting concept but then the rest of it like it escalated into a lot of like trauma that i was like oh no nah, i'm not really i don't know that just doesn't really interest me that much uh again it's another one that i maybe would have given a, ch a chance to if i could find a copy but i haven't been able to let's move on to um the books that i'm hopefully planning on reading first in march so these are the books that i actually got copies of already that's very exciting isn't it because it's been like a day so the first one is build your house around my body by violet cooper smith i feel like i heard that title i love that title i yeah i think it's just sounds great already i'm just like sold i'm definitely a judger of book covers and book titles and i was really into that one and the summary then definitely sold me on it so it seems to be about two Vietnamese women who go missing 25 years apart and how like that's related and how they're linked and it's I guess a little bit of that mystery and it sounds just fascinating and it's really a story that I would love to get my teeth into and I got a copy so I'm really excited for that. <laughs> Next is Careless by Kirsty Capes. I had heard about this one or seen the copy, um, the cover anyway. Uh, it seems to be about a teenager in foster care who finds out she's pregnant. And I think when they announced this book, they said that the author was actually in foster care as well. So I think it's going to be um, quite a poignant and realistic and truthful like portrayal of a girl in foster care. And like her life is kind of um, tumbling about a little bit. Next is The Bread the Devil Need, another bad title. It's by Lisa Allen Agostini. Um, this one, I, yeah, this cover and the title, again, striking. I was like, sold. But uh, it seems to be about domestic violence. And that's a subject that I care for very much so. But it's also one that's very hard to hear stories about real or fiction. Apparently, it's quite witty as well as dealing with a really tough subject. So, yeah, so... I'm very excited for it. It looks to be one of the shorter books at the list as well. So that's cool because they're very hefty books on this list. Uh, when I started piling them up, I was like, ooh, they're quite large books, aren't they? And um, the author, I think it's based, I think the story is based in Trinidad. And I think the author is from Trinidad as well, which is exciting. I don't know if I read from um, an author from that country before. And as you may know, I'm trying to read from authors from different countries, especially those I have not read before because I'm just trying to widen my perspective of the world, basically. So it's always great to see like a local perspective on a local story. Next is The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak. I'm so excited for this. I was so excited to see it on the list. I love 10 minutes, 38 seconds in a strange world. It was one of my favorite books of last year. And I'm actually, I was, I've, I've been kind of doing some research about wanting to maybe read all of her books that have been translated in English. And yes, yeah, so this is her most recent book. And it's based, I think, partly in Cyprus where it starts and where uh, I think it's before and during the war. And then we follow like, uh, those characters <laughs> child in London um, I'm guessing it'll be modern day but I don't know and the other book I'm going to try to fit in this month is the book of form and emptiness by Ruth Ozeki she's an author that I've been wanting to read for many years I actually have her book um, A Tale for the Time Being I've had it for years and I keep meaning to read it and in the video reactions to this list loads of people have mentioned that they love that book by her so that makes me excited for that book. And but also I will start with the book of Form of Emptiness. It seems to be about a teenager who seeks refuge in a library after their father passes away. I don't really know that much more about this book, but I'm really excited about uh, Ozeki's writing. And I think it's quite a hefty one, but I got an audiobook for that one. So yeah, we'll be getting onto that one soon. Now on to the other books that I'm hoping to read in April, because I've kind of tried to spread my... <laughs> by reading a little bit um, and since the shortlist announcements at the end of April I hopefully have most of April to read them. The first one is Great Circle by Maggie Shifstead. I'm 
really interested and keen to read this one. I think that's the one that surprised me the least that it was on this list because so many people mentioned it last year. I want to say it was like long listed or short listed for the booker and loads of people had on their favorite books of 2021 and I was kind of like not that interested by it but kind of also intrigued you know and uh, yeah passively intrigued let's let's go with that <laughs> and um it seems a bit difficult to summarize because it seems to be about a woman who wants to circumnavigate the war like pole to pole but also the actress in like more modern day is it modern day i don't know who then plays her in a movie it sounds really interesting now that i've like read more about it so i'm quite keen i think it's quite a large book but i got well i got a hold on a copy of the library but they said they're in the midst of acquiring it don't know what that means i don't know if i'll get it in time that's why i pushed it into april we'll see if i actually get a copy but i really want to read it next is soar in bliss by meg mason i was actually really interested by the cover because it's kind of very like contemporary fiction like you know, I, I like the aesthetic of it. I think some people have likened this book to a lot of Sally Rooney's novels, which I never know where I stand with that because I like her writing, but also really don't. I'm in two minds about it, basically. So I'm a bit worried about what this is going to actually be like, if it's going to be trying to be quirky. We'll see, because even the summary, it literally says, it's, I think it's a woman at the cusp of 40 who is a writer and whose life was perfect, but now it's falling apart and she moves in back in with her parents. It has a kind of quirky aspect of like modern day women's literary fiction that I don't know if I vibe with, but I got a copy and I will try. You know, let's try. Why not? Let's give it a chance. You can only really have the opinion on a book you've read, I guess. Next is The Exhibitionist by Charlotte Mendelssohn. Okay, this is giving me super The Family Fang vibes. And I'm saying that because I've recently read that as a buddy read with Jay from My Quarter Life Crisis. <laughs> and it was a book that she loved. And this, the summary, reminded me so much of it because it's basically about a family of artists and like the father, the patriarch, is like, I think it described him as an egoist artist and he's preparing for his next exhibit. Uh, they have children, it's very dysfunctional, so again, same vibes. And then the, the really interesting aspect for me was because um, it mentioned that the wife and mother basically was also an artist, but she put down um, or like on the side her dreams of being an artist and her art to, you know, take care of the house and the family. So I'm kind of interested by that little aspect. I really don't know how to feel about it, but I got a copy i got an arc actually so i'll probably start on it very soon and i'm excited to see where it goes and what it is like and yeah we'll report back <laughs> next is this one sky day by leona ross i'm so excited by this this has been on my tbr since august when i saw her talk at the edinburgh book festival and it sounded so fun and so weird and that's my kind of vibe. This is based um, on a fictional island in the Caribbean, and which is named Poppy Show, which I think is what the book is called in the US. So it's like a slightly um, different cover and title. Next is The Paper Palace by Miranda Kelly Heller. I really don't know that what this one is about. Oh yeah, <laughs> I even wrote. Even after reading the summary, I don't really know what this is about. <laughs> It seems to unfold over 24 hours, but also 50 years. I think it's a woman trying to, I think she's contemplating like her life with her husband versus like her childhood or teenage sweetheart. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really know how I feel about this one. It's just, yeah, I got a copy. I'm gonna try to read it. Yeah, I don't have strong, like I don't feel pulled in by the story, but I also don't feel like, no, nah, I wouldn't read that. So yeah. And finally, the last uh, book is Remote Sympathy by Catherine Chicky. This is potentially the book I'm least excited about. One, because of the topic and the era and the period and <laughs> like everything that it's about. Basically based during World War II, it's based um, 
not in the concentration camp, but it's basically following the Nazis. So I think it's following the wife of a Nazi camp, like director or whatever. Yeah, not, none of that is appealing to me. I've seen a lot of people's reaction and I realized that it was also my initial reaction when they said it. And I was like, yes, that's how I felt. Is a lot of people have compared it to the potential of having like the Nazi perspective from the Boy Street pajamas. And we don't know what's happened, you know, over the last, I don't know if it's the last year or two, or whatever, but anyway, there's been a lot of backlash about this and it's a weird perspective to have and yeah it, to be fair this focuses on remote sympathy so on basically disregarding oppression and all of that and if we willingly turn our blind eye and i feel like this is so relevant right now but it's also a reason why i don't want to read it because i'm also like the world is literally horrible <laughs> i don't really want to add to that but i see why they potentially had put it on a long list because it is very timely and i don't think that they would have put on a time on the long list if it had the same vibe as the boy in the strip pajama. I got a copy but I'm really not feeling it so it's at the bottom of my TBR. If I get to it maybe I'll read it but if I don't get to it then it's fine. If it gets shortlisted I'll maybe consider it but at the moment I'm not kind of very excited by it or just keen to spend my time reading it and it's a huge book as well like the copy I have I want to say it's like almost 600 pages maybe because it's an e format but yeah yeah anyway on a better note <laughs> let's end this on a positive note i'm sort of excited to be getting into this kind of world of book prizes you know i did the costa awards i'll put the li link so you can see kind of the kind of videos i've made of reactions stuff like that but this is the first one where i've told myself like i want to read some of the books i want to do prediction hopefully for the short list hopefully i'll read 10 of them by the end of april but I will come back with a prediction video before the shortlist comes out at the end of April and maybe I'll do a vlog. I'll, I'll see, I'll see. Please feel free to let me know what you think about these titles. If you've read any of them, which ones do you recommend the most? Have you not liked some of them? Do you also have good vibes about some of them? Uh, I would love to know. I've loved watching all these videos of people's reactions, so it's really cool to interact. All right, thank you so much for watching and hey, see you back. Bye.